Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing something a little different today. I'm going to do a reaction video, which I don't know if I've reacted on this personal channel before. I've been doing it on the podcast that me and my friend Alex do, Between Two Lenses podcast. I'll put it here in case you guys want to hear more longer form conversations between two women photographers and business owners, etc. I started thinking about things that I care about as well personally and that I, I really liked doing the reaction, so I thought it might be fun. And I came across, I don't even know how I came across this, but I came across these old Heidi Montag interviews. And honestly, like after watching them now, I'm like, first of all, why the fuck would someone think it's okay to talk to someone like this? And I feel like people just gave her so much shit. And I remember thinking that at the time as well. Like I never was one of those people that thought like, oh yeah, like what the fuck did she do? I was kind of more like, hey, I think she looks great. I still think she looks great. And why are people being so fucking nosy, you know? Like it's none of your fucking business. Like what this woman does with her face or body or anything like that. And the way that they handled her interviews was just so condescending and so rude. And I just honestly feel like we owe Heidi Montag an apology, okay? These interviewers in particular. I'm going to watch it and then just react in real time and I will put in the video here so you guys can also see what I'm looking at while I'm looking at it. Um, don't mind my pimple patch. I have this little guy going on right now. I randomly, my skin's been 10 out of 10 since I did my microneedling, but just recently I just got like two, I don't even know how, because I never get breakouts on my nose area, but I got like two, like one on the side and one on the side. So pimple patch it is, it's a little cute koala bear. All right, so here we go. We are gonna start this. We'll watch the short one first, let's see. Okay, so this one was on Actors Access and it's actually wild to me just right off the get that this woman choosing to do surgeries was basically the biggest news that anyone wanted to talk about because, it, and this was only, this was what, 14 years ago or something like that, 16, 15 years ago, and now plastic surgery is so commonplace. No one would even bat an eyelash. But back then, I think she had like 10 procedures done at one time. That was just unheard of and at like astronomical and people just couldn't believe. So it was literally the biggest tabloid. I think that it was the number one selling gossip magazine, if I'm not mistaken. So that just goes to show you how big of a deal it was at this time. So let's see what he has to say. I don't know his name, I forget, but it's one of the main guys that used to do actors you actors all the time. Imagine looking in the mirror saying, perfect. I feel that way now. Really? I really do feel that way. Nothing else you'd tweak, no, to touch? No, no, there's nothing else. But Heidi, um, Heidi, you're addicted to plastic surgery. I, but I do love it and I appreciate it and um, and I appreciate the science behind it. I mean, how incredible has, you know, have we been blessed to even have the surgery that we have? We're so advanced. I mean, if Cleopatra were alive now, I'm sure she'd have triple Ds and all the work's done, like, uh, like a lot of people I know, but there's... You know, she makes very, very good points. And I remember when I recently rewatched these interviews, I felt like just off the get, she handles herself so well and with so much grace and she doesn't get combative or angry at the interviewers, even though they're being super rude to her. She stays calm and collected and professional and just like very calm and matter of fact. And she makes excellent, excellent points like this, for example, I love when she said that I'm pretty sure if Cleopatra were alive today, she would have all this stuff done as well. And I would probably say that as who's to say, but I'm pretty sure she's right on that. There's always been um, a struggle between pain and beauty, I feel like, since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you feel odd if you were an 80-year-old woman in a 50-year-old woman's body? Um, no, I'd feel beautiful. <laughs> really? Yeah. Would you feel odd being an 80-year-old man and a 50-year-old I think people would know. 
Yeah. Obviously. They, they would know. Especially if you You're old. Them. What are you doing? <laughs> or they'd be like, you're old. You look great. More power to you. But it's you. part of the process. It's part of the beauty of life. We, we grow. We're little. And we get to a certain age. And then we wither away. It's kind yeah. of a... But Thank you me. seem... You're resisting that. Well, you wither away either way. And at the end of the day, you die. So I think that process is inevitable. It's how you want to age. That is your choice. And... This is another excellent point. All these people that are just so like anti-plastic surgery or anti-filler, anti-Botox, whatever. It's not, I think that people have it messed up. It's like not that people think that they're going to be young for forever. I think people are wise enough. We're not stupid. People know that, like she said, either way, you are going to wither away. Like we are all going to die. We know this, you know what I mean? But it's just like how you want to go about it. And maybe she wants to go about it looking her best self and looking however she wants to look. And that's her prerogative. So it's silly to say to someone, well, you know, like, wouldn't it be weird to look young when you're old? No, like, I'm going to look fucking fabulous, you know, like. It's just, yeah, these questions are silly. I mean, she's handling it properly. Of modern science and in this life that we've been born in and free will, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, in my opinion, that we have that choice. I think she handled herself super, super well. Um, the name of that one was Heidi Montag Feels Like Plastic Perfection. And in the beginning, he did ask her, like, is there anything else you would want to do? And she's like, no, I think I'm really good where I'm at. You know, I mean, she did all of that at once so that she didn't have to go under again, uh, which I think was actually kind of smart because I know that every time you go under, there is risk. So kind of knocking it all out at once, as long as it's like kind of monitored safely is probably safer than going under five, six, seven times, you know? Um, now we're going to watch the one that really bugged me this is on nightline it's called heidi montag addicted to beauty and this asian woman um i also forget her name was super ick it gave me the ick she was super condescending and i was surprised and it's it's always just a little bit more irritating to me when a woman is being rude to another woman you know because like men I get it they're sometimes really dumb will say the dumbest shit but like when a woman is just like mean girling another woman it's like are you okay who are you all right let's watch they say that beauty is only skin deep, but millions of cosmetic procedures are performed in the United States each year. For some, vanity becomes an obsession and going under the knife an addiction. That's what critics say drove television reality TV star Heidi Montag to dramatically alter her appearance. But as she told my colleague Juju Chang, it may not be that Juju simple. Juju Chang. and its beauty obsession. Whatever it takes, stardom at all costs. Nice to meet nice you. To meet I'm Juju. Heidi. But Heidi Montag isn't an actress or a singing sensation yet. Hello. Simply put, she is famous for being famous. Do you just not think about anyone but yourself? It all started on MTV's The Hills and her recent disastrous stint on the reality show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It completely okay. took off all my labels and everything on my dry shirt. Okay. <laughs> we know that Heidi Montag is a reality TV star, okay? But especially back then, I think now it's a little bit different because people actually see it as a job and people know that a lot of it is sort of produced and a lot of work and thought goes into the storylines etc um but back then i think it was very very looked down upon to be a reality star like that's like like a fucking diss or something like i would love to be just famous for just being myself and living my best life like i don't know it's just already she's coming across as like just rude it's getting rude <laughs> 
She and her husband, Spencer Pratt, have become marketing masters, selling themselves at every turn, in print, on radio, and on TV. A view of the hills. A view of the hills, That's yes fantastic. it is. But Heidi has been hiding from the camera since November because she's done something drastic. This 23-year-old woman has dramatically reshaped her face and body. So you're telling me that a triple D isn't enough? Well, this, see, it doesn't look very big. You know, in in real Maybe life, it's in the eye of the beholder, Heidi. That's true. <clears throat> That's very true too. She spent ten hours under the knife, getting ten different plastic surgery procedures. This is what she looked like before the surgery. Now, look at her on the cover of this week's People magazine. Yeah, I had my legs um, liposuction on the inside and outside, but it wasn't really to take out the fat. It was more just to contour the legs, and then I had my back. Um, scooped out a little bit to help give a curvier look and then a little bit on the sides. Too. Really? Yes. Breast implants, a brow lift, Botox, a nose job revision, fat injections in her cheeks, chin reduction, neck liposuction, and had her ears pinned back too. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Okay, that was the other thing that I realized um, on all of the tabloids and things like this that were just really blowing up this story into the most juicy bit of celebrity gossip they could get their hands on them saying oh she had 10 procedures at one time the things that she actually she did have a lot done at once but some of the 10 were not super invasive things you know like lipo or like you know breast implants like things that actually you had to go under the knife for like having your nose done or something like that but she did have all of those things and like the chin the chin shaving was pretty intense but other stuff is stuff that was not technically invasive so things like lip filler things like botox they just kind of added those things in as part of the 10 procedures but that's stuff that people do regularly and that can go back to work the next day so you know probably like what was it like six procedures at once that were like medically under the knife which is still a lot but not 10 procedures at once that that sounds like i mean she went in and came out like frankenstein or something um also, I don't know if I'm the only person that feels like this slash felt like this, but I remember even back then, whenever she had her reveal on the hills and she was showing her mom and her mom was like, oh my God, what have you done? I, I thought it looked really good. <laughs> like, I don't see anything wrong with it. I thought she looked beautiful. I thought she looked like Barbie. I thought her face was snatched AF. I loved what they did with the plastic surgery. So like, am I the only one? I just thought it looked fantastic. Would I have all of that done? No, because I am terrified of that much. I couldn't, especially one time it would freak me out. But did I think she looked good? Yeah, good for her. I see um, improvement. A lot of people are saying, well, She's an addict. She's addicted to fame. <laughs> She's addicted to plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. How do you respond? I'm not addicted. If I were addicted, I would have had 10 plastic surgeries and look you like... You did have 10 plastic well, surgeries. Well, I mean 10 times. I really had two different surgeries. I had one three years ago, and then I had one that I had several procedures done um, weeks ago. If you're addicted to something, you have to do it all the time, not once every couple of years, if even. If not addicted, admittedly. That's another good point because there are people that are addicted to plastic surgery and you see them all the time on things like Botched and they'll be like, I've had 20 plastic surgeries back to back to back. I can't stop. And she was more like, I just want to get over with. You know, I don't want to have to go in over and over and I just want to go in, get what I want and then get out. So it's a little different. I see what she's saying. Obsessed. Before I went into my surgery, I was obsessed because I had to look through hours of photos of which boob size I wanted and Playboy. You could do that. You know, I did do that. I did for hours and looking at which size and how it looked and what it would look like on my body. But that sounds unhealthy to me. Right. But you have to be prepared for your surgery. So if you're going to do surgery, it's like doing research, you know, for a paper that you're writing. But why go in at all? 
Montag says one reason is that she was teased about her looks as a child, but also Heidi Montag wants to become a pop star. One of the things you talked about in the People magazine article was this idea that you're entering um, the world of music as well and that right. you feel like you're competing um, with the likes of Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? In I terms think, of the plastic surgery. You know, I am trying to be a pop star, and I just have my album that came out, and it's a very cutthroat business, and when Britney was in her prime, it was her sex appeal that sold. And without that sex appeal, I don't know if she would have had the career she would have had. We're getting literally hundreds of calls from patients who want the Heidi Montag bombshell look, I guess. Her surgeon, Dr. Frank Ryan, defends his patient's decision and says it's not uncommon in Hollywood. And where do you draw the line? I mean, because a lot of people are saying, Heidi was so beautiful before the surgery. Why give a beautiful 23-year-old girl that much plastic surgery? Well, I, again, I disagree that it's that much plastic surgery. Many mm -hmm. of these are little tweaks and little things mm -hmm. that we did. Mm -hmm. These are all kind of small things. But some hospitals don't recommend elective plastic surgeries to extend beyond six hours due to complications. Montag's lasted 10. Did you have to do 10 all at once? If it's safe to do it together, which it is, and a young, healthy 23-year-old, we opted to do it together. Montag says recovery was difficult. I almost died after the procedures. I went to uh, an aftercare place, and I was in so much pain, so they gave me more Demerol, but I'm so small that I think they gave me too much, and I almost stopped breathing. I was taking like five breaths per minute and they had to put an oxygen mask on me and it was, they had to take me off the Demerol. You are very much an idol to young girls. You are on the cover of a magazine, you are a big name in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and these young girls are reading what you say about Triple D isn't big enough, that I wasn't pretty enough. What kind of message does that send to young girls? Well, my main message is that beauty is really within and but that may be your message, but that's not the message you're sending with all of this. I'm in a limelight, I'm in a different industry, and I have to do things that are gonna make me happy at the end of the day. Montag's new album is ironically titled Superficial. Okay, so her songs are bangers. Yeah. She says she and her husband spent $2 million of their own money producing the album. I actually have a producer on my album who worked with Michael Jackson. But the question is, do you have the same talent? I have all this, the same producers, you know, I have all the same, so the quality so of the really? music is just as good. It doesn't matter if you like me or not. Can you sing something for us? Uh, no, that's on the album. You gotta get that featured. You don't have to sing something off the album. Can you sing a little something? something? Um, I'd rather not. I just got a lot of surgery, so my jaw and everything is still very delicate. Singing career aside, Heidi is certainly talented when it comes to perpetuating her own fame. I mean, that's a lot of people think wrong? this is what's wrong with American culture, is precisely what you said, that you think it's an honor to be famous for being famous. Well, I think it's an honor to get a paycheck in any way, shape, or form. I think that really you think well not any way shape right, or form exactly. let me clarify for yeah. me i rather be getting a paycheck for being famous for being famous than working at my parents restaurant mm -hmm. but i would argue that there's virtue in the hard work i would rather work at the restaurant but that would be your path whatever the path it remains to be seen if what montag did to her body will help i love when she said that because that's again an excellent point when this rude ass interviewer says well, yeah, but, you know, I find it virtuous to work in a restaurant. Well, that, like she said, she put it nicer than I would have put it, but her saying, well, that would be your path. That's maybe what you want to do. That is not what I want to do. I don't want to work in a restaurant for the rest of my life. I don't want to have a nine-to-five the rest of my life. So the fact that this woman is, like, belittling someone that was actually just living their best life and getting paid for it is, uh, yeah. Okay will help her get the success she's after. Why is everybody getting surgery, you know? It's, it goes back to the beginning. I think one of the keys here is honesty is very important. I could have easily swept this under mm -hmm. the rug, never commented about it, never said anything about it, but that would be a lie. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang. And she really was one of the first people, like back then, another thing about celebrities getting plastic surgery, everyone and their mother was getting some sort of plastic surgery or tweaks or fillers or 
whatever. And everyone was lying about it. Or if they weren't lying, it was just like omitted. So it was just not, no one was talking about it. And now it's much more common to have celebrities just come out and say, you know, I've had X, Y, and Z done. You know, Chrissy Teigen came out and said I had buckle fight removal. Megan Fox came out and said, yeah, I had a bigger boob job done. Like people are just coming out left and right now. It's like the popular thing to do is being upfront about what procedures you've had. But back then, nobody was doing that. So I really do applaud her for being so upfront and not just leaving all of that out. Um, And one of my biggest pet peeves, just like a takeaway on this, because I don't know if you guys see it, but the way that they handled her, and she got this shit the whole time for like a year afterwards. I feel like I remember her talking about how her whole album and things like that was kind of overshadowed by her plastic surgery which is really sad. And now her music is blowing up on TikTok. It is super big. It's really big in Japan. And and I feel uh, sad for her that um, this was such the story that people cared so much about what she chose to do with her own body, which is really none of their business. And she did look great. I don't care what they say. Now she looks like pretty much every girl walking around because this is the look anyway. So she was years ahead and everyone else is trying to emulate this now and it's not even blinked at. And um, just like a little takeaway, so like one of my biggest pet peeves is the holier than thou people and try to belittle someone else and I'm all high and mighty for whatever reason. And like, I find virtue in like the small, simple, quiet life. Well, that's good for you, sis. That's your path, it's not mine. Don't try to make me feel small so you can feel high and mighty. It's just not cute. And that is how most of these interviewers treated her. Um, And it's just really sad. So, yeah. And honestly, too, every time I see her in any kind of interview, she might be fun. She might be bubbly. She might not be, like, the most serious person on the planet. But sometimes, honestly, that's fucking refreshing because everyone takes themselves way too seriously nowadays. And also, she just always seems super lovely and kind and soft-spoken and just nice and friendly. And, uh, yeah, I just think we really, really treated her poorly back in the day. And by we, I mean these people, okay? So be kind um, and don't be a woman who hates on other women for making different choices for their own body. And, yeah, mind your business, you know what I mean? Bye.